Welcome to module 3 of chapter 6. In this module, we are going to discuss constructing new graphs from the old graphs. That is first one we are going to discuss is a complement of a graph. If x is a given graph, then its complement is denoted by x power c. This x power c has the same vertex set as c, but the edges which are in x not going to be in x complement, x complement and the edges which are in x complement are not edges of x. That is the edge set if I take for x and x complement, their intersection is empty, but their union is set of all edges of complete graph k n. Similarly, we are going to discuss a line graph of a given graph and also we will see various operations of graphs. That is if x1 and x2 are two graphs, then we are going to define union of these two graphs, intersection of the graphs and Cartesian product of the graphs and so on. Module 3, here we are going to discuss construction of new graphs from old graphs. The objectives of this module are complement of a graph, subgraphs of a graph, line graph of a graph and walks, paths and cycles. So, first we are going to discuss complement of a graph. For a graph x equal to v comma e, the complement of x denoted x power c, x complement is the graph that has v as its vertex set and two vertices in the graph x complement are adjacent if and only if they are not adjacent in x. For example, if the graph x is given as 1, 2, 3, 4 cycle graph C4, then its complement is given as same vertex set 1, 2, 3, 4, but here now if you look at in the graph x there is no edge between 3 and 2, now we have an edge between 3 and 2 there is no edge from 1 and 4 and now there is an edge from 1 and 4 and the remaining edges which are in x are not in x complement. And further, if you take if you take all these edges combinedly, then we are going to get all the edges of this complete graph k4. The following graphs are complement of each other. For example, the first graph here is the cycle graph with 5 vertices. Now, its complement is like this and it is also cycle graph. So, these are complement to each other. It is easy to see that k m n c that is a complete bipartite graph complement is the disjoint union of two complete graphs namely k m and k n. If x is regular, then x complement is also regular that we will show, but before going to that we will prove this proposition. The proposition says that if a graph x has at least two pendant vertices, then its complement x complement has at most two pendant vertices. If A and B are two pendant vertices of a graph x, suppose C comma D, C may be equal to D, be adjacent to vertices A comma B respectively, then x complement the only possible pendant vertices are C comma D. Now, we will prove that if x is regular, then x complement is also regular as in this example. If x is a k regular graph on n vertices, then show that x complement is also regular graph. The proof is simple. From the definition of a complement of a graph, edge set of x union, edge set of x complement is equal to edge set of complete graph k n. Hence, the number of edges incident with any vertex in x complement is n minus 1 minus k that the x complement is n minus 1 minus k regular graph. Subgraph of a graph, a graph y is said to be subgraph of a graph x if y itself is a graph and all its vertices and all the edges in y are in x. That is v of y is contained in v of x and e of y is contained in e of x. If v of y that is vertex set of y is not equal to vertex set of x or edge set of y is not equal to edge set of x, then y is called a proper subgraph of x. Every graph is its own subgraph. A single vertex or an edge of x with its end vertices is a subgraph of x. If z is a subgraph of y, then y is a subgraph of x, then z is going to be subgraph of x. Usually, subgraphs are obtained from original graph 
by deleting the edges or vertices along with its incident edges from X. Other type of subgraphs, if X of V comma E is a graph and V has at least two elements, then X minus V is denotes the subgraph of X with vertex set as V minus V and its edge sets are edges from X that are not incident with V. It is called vertex deleted subgraph. The graph X minus E is called edge deleted subgraph of X as V as its vertex set and edge set as E minus E as edge set. If Y is a subgraph of a graph X and V of Y equal to V of X, then Y is called a spanning subgraph of X. That means for spanning subgraph, the vertex sets are same, edges may be different. Induced subgraph of a graph, if a subgraph Y of a graph is said to be induced subgraph, if two vertices V of Y are adjacent in Y, if and only if they are adjacent in X. Neighborhood subgraph, let X equal to V comma E be a graph and V of X equal to V1, V2 and so on Vn, then we can define neighborhood of VA, N of VA is equal to all Vj such that VA comma Vj is an edge in X. So, it is collection of all vertices which are adjacent to VI. A set having all vertices of X that are adjacent to VI. The set is called neighborhood of VI. Since we are assuming that there are no self loops, that is VI does not belong to N of VI, then the induced subgraph on N of VI denoted by NI star is called neighborhood graph of VI number of spanning subgraph of a complete graph k n. Find the number of subgraphs of the complete graph k n. Also draw all spanning subgraphs of k 3. Since uh, let x be a spanning subgraph of k n, then the number of vertices in x is same as in k n that is n. There are two possibilities for each edge in k n. Either it is still an edge or it is not an edge of x. Further number of edges in k n is n into n minus 1 by 2. Hence, there are 2 power n into n, min n minus 1 by 2 possible spanning subgraphs of k. The spanning subgraphs of k 3. So, now we are giving an example for number of spanning, spanning subgraphs for k 3. So, first spanning subgraph is for k 3 is this entire k 3 itself and here we removed one edge. but three vertices are there and this is also spanning subgraph and these are all spanning subgraphs. Okay, in all these graphs, if you look at, there are three vertices are there, only problem is the edges. So, we have entire K3 as well as the null graph N3. The line graph of a graph is defined as given a graph X, it is a line graph denoted line graph of X or LG of X is a graph having the edges of X as its vertices and two vertices of line graph are adjacent if and only if the corresponding edges in X share a common end point in X. The line graph of a complete graph K n is known to be triangular graph. We are not given example here. Now, in uh, one reader can see draw different complete graphs and uh, their line graphs. So, they are called uh, triangular graphs. Now, look at the example of line graphs. Graphs, first we are giving the graphs C4 and K13 complete bipartite graph K13 and K4 minus C in the complete graph we deleted one edge 2, 4. So, the, then their line graphs are defined like this. The line graph of C4 is again same as C4 and the line graph of K13 is going to be K3. It is easy to see that for there are three edges there. So, here we have three vertices. So, vertices also we took as one four edge there. So, we will call it as we labeled vertex as one four, one three edge is one three vertex here, one two edge, one two vertex here and all these three edges are incident there. So, we have a complete graph K 3. Similarly, K 4 minus E turn, turns out to be its line graph is turns out to be W 4 wheel graph. It is easy to see that 
line graph of Cn is again Cn. The path graph of line, line graph of path graph is going to be Pn minus 1. And the line graph of complete bipartite graph, in particular the star graph K1n is going to be Kn. So, we have one small theorem for on the line graphs. Let x be a graph with vertex at V is equal to V1, V2 and so on Vn. Let dA be the degree of the vertex Vi, small vi and let y be a line graph of x, then edge set of y is equal to 1 by 2 summation 1 is equal to 1 to n dA square minus edge set of x. Since the degree of each vertex V i is d i, the line graph y i has 1 by 2 times summation i is equal to 1 to n d i vertices. It is because number of edges in x is equal to the number of vertices in y and the corresponding contribution to edges e y is d h choose 2. So, why d h choose 2 is easy to see. Hence, the edge set of y is equal to that, that is cardinality of edge set of y is equal to summation i is equal to 1 to n d h choose 2. So, which is equal to summation i is equal to 1 to n d a into d a minus 1 by 2 which is equal to 1 by 2 times summation i is equal to 1 to n d a square minus half times summation i is equal to 1 to n d a which is equal to half times summation i is equal to 1 to n d a square minus e of x. So, now we will see operations on graphs x 1 is equal to v 1 e 1 and x 2 equal to v 2 e 2 b 2 graphs, then their union is denoted by x 1 union x 2 is a graph that has v 1 union v 2 as its vertex set and e 1 union e 2 as its edge set. Intersection graph is denoted as x 1 intersection x 2 is a graph that contains only those vertices and edges that are common in both x 1 and x 2. The ring sum is denoted as x 1 ring sum of x 2 is a graph with having vertex set as v 1 union v 2, but edge set is it's a symmetric difference of e 1 e 2 that is e 1 union e 2 minus e 1 intersection e 2. And the Cartesian product is denoted as x 1 cross x 2 is a graph that has v 1 cross v 2 as vertex set and the vertices a comma b c comma d belongs to v 1 cross v 2 are adjacent if either a equal to c or and b comma d belongs to edge set of x 2 or b is equal to d and a comma c is an edge in x 1. So, for example, x 1 is the k 2 1 the graph 1 2 with two vertices 1 2 and edge between them and x 2 is the path graph p 3 a b c with vertices a b c. Then x 1 cross x 2 is graph like this and x 2 cross x 2 is graph going to be like that. Till now we saw various ways to construct new graphs from given graphs. Now we are going to give basic definitions of, of the graph like walk of a graph, eccentricity of the graph, radius of the graph, diameter of the graph and so on. Now we are going to define walk and path in a graph. A walk in a graph or a diagraph is a finite sequence of vertices and edges, namely w equal to v0, e1, v1, e2, v2 and so on, vk minus 1, ek and vk. Here there is an edge from v0 to v1, the edge is e1, there is an edge from v1 to v2 at the edge is e2 and so on. That is why the edge ei is connecting v i minus 1 to v i for 1 less than or equal to i less than or equal to k. The above walk w is called v 0 v k walk. The walk w is called closed if v naught is equal to v k that means uh, initial vertex equal to the final vertex and is called open otherwise. The length of the walk w equal to v 0 e 1, v 1, e 2, v 2 and so on, v k minus 1, e k, v k is k. 
that is the number of occurrences of edges in it. A walk is called a trail if all edges are distinct and is called a path if all vertices are distinct. Sometimes the path V0, E1, V1 and so on, EK, VK is also denoted simply as V1, V2 and so on, VK. That means that there is a path from V0 to VK, where it is understood that the, the two con any two consecutive vertices forms an edge. The distance between two vertices, <coughs> if a walk is closed, then it is called a cycle or a directed cycle of the graph or a diagraph X provided X vertices, the, if its K vertices are distinct and K greater than or equal to 3. The length of the shortest cycle in a graph is called girth of X denoted G of X. Let X be a simple graph, then distance between two vertices U and V in X denoted dx of uv or simply d of uv and is the length of the shortest path or directed path joining them if such path exists. Otherwise, d of u comma v is infinity. It is easy to check that the distance function as defined above satisfies the following properties. Again recall distance from vertex u to vertex v is denoted as d of uv. It is the shortest length of the shortest path joining between these two vertices. So, it satisfies these properties. D of u comma v is greater than or equal to 0 and equality holds if and only if u equal to v. It is because if there is no path from u to v, then we are saying we are defining d of u v is infinity. So, d of u v is always greater than or equal to 0 and d of u v equal to d of u that is the distance from u to v is same as distance from v to v, v to u. So, that is distance is a symmetric function. d of u v is less than or equal to d of u w comma d of w comma v that is it is satisfying the triangle inequality as well. Connected graph, a graph is said to be connected if each pair of vertices is joined by a path. The maximal connected subgraph is called connected component or simply component of X. Thus, disconnected graph has at least two components. A diagraph is said to be strongly connected if for any pair of vertices there exists a directed path from one to the other. So, diameter of a graph, the shortest UV path is often called ge geodesic. The diameter of a connected graph is the length of any longest geodesic denoted by d of x or simply d. A connected acyclic graph is called a tree or any acyclic graph is simply called forest. Eccentricity of a vertex and radius of a graph. Let x equal to v comma b e be a connected simple graph. The eccentricity of a vertex v is denoted as epsilon of v is the greatest geodesic distance between v and any other vertex u belongs to v. The radius of a graph is denoted r of x or simply r is the maximum minimum eccentricity of any vertex. In symbols r is equal to minimum of v belongs to capital V eccentricity of v. Therefore, note that the diameter of x is the maximum eccentricity of any vertex in the graph that is d is the greatest distance between any pair of vertices. Alternatively, d is equal to maximum of v belongs to v epsilon of v. So, this definition is useful. d is the greatest distance between any two pair of vertices that is the diameter of the graph. To find diameter of a graph, we first find the shortest path between each pair of vertices. The greatest length of any such paths is the diameter of the graph. Out of all connected graphs on n vertices, the path graph has the lar largest diameter 
that is equal to n minus 1 and the complete graph has a smallest diameter which is equal to 1. So, with this one can understand the concept of diameter. In the connected graph, path has the largest diameter and complete graph has the smallest diameter. Central vertex of a graph, central vertex in a graph of radius r is the one whose eccentricity is r. That is a vertex that achieves the radius r equally a vertex v such that eccentricity of v equal to r that is called central vertex. Center or Jordan center of a graph is set of all vertices of minimum eccentricity that is set of all vertices A where the greatest distance d of A comma B for any other vertex B is the minimal. Equivalently, it is set of all vertices with eccentricity equal to the graph radius. Thus, vertices in the center or central points minimizes the maximum distance from other points in the graph. A peripheral vertex in a graph of diameter d is a vertex which is at a distance d from some other vertex that is v is peripheral if epsilon of v equal to d. Finding center of a graph is useful in facility location problems where the goal is to minimize worst case distance to the facility. For example, placing a hospital at a central point reduces the longest distance the ambulance has to travel. In the complete graph k n, where n is greater than or equal to 2, eccentricity of v equal to 1 for all vertices. Consequently, the radius and diameter of k n is same and this number is equal to 1. Thus, every vertex is a central or a peripheral vertex for the complete graph k n. In the complete bipartite graph, K, K n n, n is greater than or equal to 2, eccentricity of v is equal to 2 for all v belongs to all vertices. Consequently, the radius and diameter of K n n is same and this number is equal to 2. Again, every vertex is a central or peripheral vertex even in this case, but here note that it is a complete graph with m equal to n. That means, these are regular graphs. The star graph k 1 n, where n is greater than or equal to 2, the radius is 1, whereas diameter is 2. The vertex that has degree n is the only central vertex. All the vertices are of degree 1 are peripheral vertices. Now, we will see another example. For the graph given below, both the vertices 3 and 4 are central vertices the remaining vertices are peripheral vertices. Note that the radius of this graph is 2 and diameter is 3. Why diameter is 3? It is because the distance from 2 to 6 is 3 or 1 to 6 is also 3. That is the maximum distance between any two vertices. Now, we are going to prove an important result that is a graph is bipartite if and only if it has no odd cycles that is a graph is bipartite if and only if it contains no odd cycles. That means, in a bipartite graph the length of every cycle is even. The solution first note that it is sufficient to prove that the result for connected graphs. So, let x equal to v comma e be a bipartite connected graph. Our claim is that we need to show that x has no cycles of odd length. Since x is bipartite, v is equal to v 1 union v 2, where v 1 intersection v 2 is empty. If there are no cycles in the graph, then the result is clearly true. Suppose, c is equal to v 1 v 2 and so on, v k v 1 is an arbitrary cycle in x of length k it is sufficient to show that k is even. Since, we are supposed one cycle arbitrary cycle v 1, v 2 and so on v k and again v 1. So, it is a cycle when and its length is k. So, we need to show that k is even. Since v 1 belongs to either v 1 or v 2 by, by remaining the sets 
we may assume that v1 belongs to v1 by renaming the sets we may assume that v1 belongs to v1 then by definition of bipartite graph we see that i is greater than or equal to 1 v2i plus 1 belongs to v1 and v2i to i belongs to v2 further the edge v1 comma vk belongs to e and hence vk belongs to v2 are equivalently k is even so here we showed that if a graph is bipartite and it is connected then every cycle length is even now we need to prove the converse part conversely suppose that x has no cycles of odd length now the claim is we need to show that x is a bipartite graph let p be a vertex p belongs to v of x we define v1 is equal to x all x vertices x such that d of x comma p distance from x to p is even and v2 is all vertices such that distance from p is odd okay that is v2 contains all vertices x distance of d of x comma p is odd so clearly v of x is v1 union v2 that means every vertex from p is either of even length or odd length so v of x is v1 union v2 and v1 intersection v2 is also empty so only thing now we need to show that if i if you take any two vertices in v1 or any two vertices in v2 there is no edge between them that we need to show now it is sufficient to prove that no two vertices in v1 are and no two vertices in v2 are adjacent let us possible suppose that r comma s belongs to v1 and they are adjacent then we need to give a contradiction so if you look at the diagram here we took p is a one vertex and r and s are another vertices and we took a dotted line and there is an edge from r to s then by construction of v1 d of p comma r is is equal to 2m and d of ps also equal to 2m since v1 is a collection of all vertices which are at a distance even length from p so since r and s both are in v1 so both are of even length let p1 and p2 be paths from p2r and p2s respectively if p1 and p2 have no vertices in common other than the initial vertex p then we x has a cycle p to r to s then to p of odd length 2n plus 2m plus 1 so suppose q is a q is the last vertex common to both p1 and p2 other than p since p1 and p2 are the shortest paths from p to r and s respectively so the distance between p and q is independent of the path thus distance from q to r is equal to 2n minus distance of pq and distance of q to s is equal to 2m minus distance of pq as shown in the following figure there is a cycle q to r to s then again to q of length 2n minus d of pq plus 2m minus d of pq plus 1 which is also odd so that means that we showed that the, there is a closed path cycles whose lengths are odd which is a contradiction we assumed that every cycle is of even length so but we produced a contradiction so hence no vertices in v1 are adjacent similar argument we can show that no two vertices in v2 are also not adjacent hence we proved the required result in this module we proved an important result that is a graph is bipartite if and only if the length of every cycle is even with this module we introduced all the def basic definitions required to study graph theory from the next module onwards we will look at a special topics of graph theory with this we end this module